to reminding people of being at the first moment of this presentation. Mm, good luck with that webinar. I should just stick to the topic and focus on my analysis skills and experiences. Okay, so let's see. I am a certified elite wave analyst and I've been publishing and I've been publishing elite wave analysis professionally for six years now. But then again, almost every other presenter around here has at least that same level of experience, if not more. That won't cut it. But then I came upon this quote. What can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. This means that I need an evidence. Great. So I went to my public archives here on FX Street and I looked through my published weekly reports. And what I came up with was just with this one chart. These are the tops and bottoms that I had anticipated during that time. And these labels and these labels show how accurate they were bitwise and how many days in advance. Of course, each label has the date when the analysis was published here on FX Street, so that it's verifiable. Have you entered a trade based on MACD, RSI, or even following a pattern, and that trade goes in your favor right off the bat? 15 minutes later, out of the blue, trade goes against you, and you keep wondering whether you should wait that move out or just cut the loss. Well, I had that happen to me. And I'm here today to share with you how we and our members at EliteWeekForex.com managed to minimize, if not eliminate, having that bad experience. Trading currencies, options, or stocks. It's just a game of probability. We all know these probabilities are not in our favor. So to take that skill in our direction, we should not depend on one technique. No matter how powerful that technique is, we should add further confirmations using other techniques. How elite wave analysis relate to different technical analysis techniques and how to integrate these techniques seamlessly, that is what we will be talking about for the next 45 minutes. Come to think about it, it doesn't make sense to neglect what we have learned and gained experience at just to adapt a new technique. We will be viewing chart patterns technical indicators, and candlesticks patterns from an elite wave perspective. And towards the end of this presentation, we will go through a practical trading example showing how it all fit together. And finally, the Q&A session. Before we start with the patterns, I would like to start by illustrating a bit on the fractal nature of waves. Anyone know what elliticians mean by that word, fractal nature of waves? No one? Okay. That term doesn't only mean that these waves repeat across different time frames, but as well, small blocks join together to form bigger waves. And if we look into a bigger wave, we can view smaller waves within it. Let's see what we mean by that. This is a two hours chart of cable, British pound, US dollar pair. On this two hours chart, we can clearly see a five waves advancing. But what will we see if we looked on that one hour chart, for instance? In theory, we should be able to see each of these waves subdividing into smaller waves. So let's move to the one hour chart and see if we can spot any difference. On the one hour chart, we can see that wave three green is subdividing into a five wave structure. Actually, if we look closely, we can notice two more things. First, wave three orange can be clearly subdividing into a five wave structure. As well, can you see a five wave structure within wave five green? If you're like me and you're not sure of the structure of Wi-Fi Orange, then let's go into a smaller time frame. How about a 15 minutes drop? Okay, now we can see five. Now we can see five waves inside with the Orange, but enough viewing third enough viewing third waves. What should we expect going to a lower time frame to see the subdivisions within mm, let's see wave one orange here? What will we see? We can see within wave one orange a clearly five wave structure labeled wave one, two, five, and purple. Actually, 
it's not just that. We can clearly see that we want purple subdivided into a clear five wave structure as well. Within we want one. Mm, enough about all the motive waves. How about if we go further down within let's see wave wave two aqua here. This is a thick chart and this move and this zigzag labeled waves A, B, and C red represents wave two aqua. Now, the fractal nature is just this. If we thought of the wave structure we saw on the two hour chart as wave one, then we would expect a three moves for the downside to complete wave two. Then an impulsive advance representing wave three green. No matter the time frame we are looking at, this pattern will keep showing up, and that is the fractal nature of many things. Okay, now let's move to the short patterns here. Anyone can identify this pattern? Spot on, Adam. That's a head and shoulders pattern. It consists of a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. The neckline is represented by a red line, and that is important for calculating a target after the completion of the pattern. This is how a head and shoulders pattern looks from an elite wave perspective. Top of wave three for the left shoulder, and top of wave five for the head, and top of wave B for the right shoulder. Now, what is the most common way for calculating targets after completion of head and shoulders pattern? Well, let me see if I can get it to work. By drawing, by drawing a line from the top of the head to the neckline and then projecting that line from the breakout point toward the downside. Well, that would give us an initial target based on a head and shoulders pattern. You can already see the problem with this way of calculating the target. If this was an APC pattern, from an elite wave perspective, we already know that C waves tends towards equality with A waves, right? So while hidden shoulders target would be around this level, an equality target based on elite wave analysis would be around this level. Still pretty accurate, but elite wave analysis provides us with much, much more accuracy. However, if we consider that ABC pattern to be a one, two, three pattern, so a motive wave instead of a corrective wave, then head and shoulders target would be quite accurate. Let's just see how that looks on a real chart, shall we? This chart is a two hour chart for cable for 25th of October, 2015. We can tell by now that both left shoulder and head are complete, but not yet the right shoulder. This chart here is the chart we published to our members 26th of October before London's session. So we have a target based on elite wave analysis, which is at 1.6025. Let's calculate the target based on the head and shoulders pattern. As mentioned, we draw a line from atop of the head of the neckline and projected that line downwards from that point of breakout. That gave us a target at around 1.5997. So now we have two targets, the head and shoulders targets at 1.5997 and the elite wave target at 1.6025, almost 30 pips away. By the end of the 26th, by the end of the 26th of October, bound and folded toward the downside, reaching 1.6022, three pips below the elite wave target, before reversing direction. One week later, cable continued to reach that target of the head and shoulders pattern and moved below it. That accuracy is what elite wave analysis is famous for. Okay. Let's move on to the next pattern. So anyone can tell what the pattern is? Well, Ashkisoni, you answered that right, but I didn't, hear, I didn't read it at the time. Sorry about that. 
well, waves two and four represent that cup and handle. If the pattern took place in the, fourth, in the fourth wave, then the cup would be best represented by wave C within wave four green, and handle is best represented by wave two orange. Okay, now let's see a practical example of a cup and handle pattern to better understand that concept. This chart is a six-hour chart for cable for 4th of April 2014. The cup and handle patterns seem to be complete and easily identifiable with the cup low at 1.6461 and the handle low at 1.6554. We will get back to the numbers. It's not enough more. Let's step back for a moment and view that lead wave perspective right before the completion of that handle. This chart we publish here on the 3rd of April one day before the completion of the handle pattern. A target zone from 1.6556 to 1.5647, that is a nine pip target zone. We were expecting the completion of wave to orange. By the end of the day, cable found a bottom at the end at exactly 1.5653, uh, 1.5653, which is exactly three peps inside that target zone. The beauty of elite wave analysis is that it can anticipate a pattern completion beforehand and, of course, sit you on the right track as cable advances right from that point. Well, mercy, um, I guess we, we can answer. That's a really great question. And we will answer that in the QA. Could you hold that for a moment? Sorry about that. OK, now let's move to the next pattern. Time for the pattern ident identification question. Can anyone identify this pattern? This time I will wait. So. Great, excuse This is a triangle, but that is from an Elliott wave terminology. Um, this chart pattern here is a pennant. Pennants differs from flag patterns in that flags are rectangular in shape, while pennants are triangular in shape. A pennant is considered a continuation pattern. So if the preceding move was a downward move, then we should expect to resume the downtrend following that pattern completion. Pennants take place in one of three positions. Almost always, triangle or pennants take place in the fourth wave position, to a lesser degree in the, in the B wave position, and it rarely takes place in an X wave position. From an elite wave perspective, this represents a triangle. A triangle, as you all know, precedes the final wave of a sequence. A thrust follows the completion of a triangle and the reversal, and then reversal toward the upside. Did anyone notice the MACD divergence on the lower part of the slide? Keep that in mind. We will get to that in a, we will get to that point in a while. Okay, now if we saw that move following the triangle, the triangle completion on the 15 minute chart, we will see a clear five wave structure with the downside signaling the completion of that sequence. And what happens next is a move toward the upside, a reversal. Okay, now to the next pattern. Any takers? From an elite wave perspective, this pattern represents a diagonal, one of the most powerful waves in elite wave analysis. Why? Because of the price action that follows the completion of a wave. The next, the next example here is from three days chart of the euro, of the euro dollar pair. 
This is what we assume is happening right now with this pair. A completed rising wedge or a diagonal. What should we expect next? A quick move toward the downside, which is quite finished yet. Now, that completed the chart pattern part of this webinar. Now let's move to the technical indicators pattern um, part. Sorry about that. <laughs> We will start with MACD, moving average, convergence, divergence indicator. This is a must-have indicator. It really is a powerful tool. When it comes to any trade analysis, you can't live without that, without that indicator. Many ways and techniques to use MACD. Most common is crossover or a hook, either bullish or bearish. But we'll be focusing today on MACD divergence. Divergence are either a classic divergence or a hidden divergence. A classic divergence is just what we see in this chart. Price moved toward the upside, making higher high, while MACD readings kept registering lower high. That, in itself, is a signal of reversal. While the hidden divergence, on the other hand, price remained below that recent high while MACD keep registering higher high toward the upside, and that as well is a sign of reversal. Now, let's see the, the elite wave perspective of this chart. We and our members here at Elite Report have one observation which, to our knowledge, needs to be discussed in more detail. That observation is, at certain times, MACD needs two divergence to signal a trend reverse, to signal a trend reversal, even if just a temporary one. Let's see how and why. Okay, now the annotation is working. What we can see here is the high of the third wave. We all know that third waves register the highest momentum. So a clear divergence between, sorry, let's just do that again. Okay. So just a clear divergence here should signal a trend reversal. But this is not the case. What we have noticed is that at times it takes two divergences for a trend reversal, just like these ones. And to, for more of that, here you can see a third divergence. Why is that? Well, we three green was completed with the highest momentum. However, the subdivision within the five green was complete and visible on this chart with, with waves one, two, three, four, and five. So we have a third wave here within we five green. So a third wave within we five green, again, has the highest momentum within we five green. And we five green, and that fifth wave within we five green has lower momentum. This leads to price registering higher highs, while MACD registering lower highs. At the time, we thought that the next wave's direction should be down. But since this is a completed five-wave sequence, we anticipated the next downwards leg to be corrected, a three-wave decline, and we had a target zone at 1.6036 to 1.5986. So almost a 50 pep target zone. We notice in this chart that cable reverse direction from one point, from 1.60 10, that 20 peps inside that target zone. What else we notice that here we show, oh, let me work with the annotation again. working. So following that divergence here, we moved clearly in a three-wave pattern on the top, toward the downside, and we had a completed sequence within the target zone we specified. That, of course, was, ba was based on equality. What else can we see here? Well, after the completion of the three-wave sequence, we can clearly see a divergence, but that not 
a classical divergence, this is a heavy divergence because price action didn't move to the downside to create a lower low, while MACD kept registering lower lows. And that in itself suggests that divergences or hidden divergences create the same signal to us. Okay, that concluded the MACD part and how important it is to be used with Elite Wave analysis. If there is one indicator you should use with Elite Wave, then it definitely is MACD. Now, let's move to RSI or Relative Strength Index. That index was the, that indicator was developed by J. Willis Wilder. Let's stress on one point first on how to use RSI with elite wave analysis. If the move we are following is against the trend, then we should wait for two things to happen before considering a change of direction. First, a clear of divergence, and then an overput or an oversold signal. While if that move we are following was with the trend, then it's okay to consider a change with just an overbought or an oversold signal. One thing I forgot to mention so far is that all indicators are used with their standard settings with no changes to their parameters. Now, let's leave academics behind us and move to a practical example of using RSI with Elliott wave analysis. This was a two hour chart of cable by the end of 23rd of April we can notice a small oversold signal on the bottom of the, of the slide here. But that in itself would not be enough reason to enter the trade now, would it? Let's see that chart from an elite wave perspective first before we jump. This chart was published on 23rd to our members, which suggested that wave A orange was complete and that wave B orange is complete as well. Now, let's step, back, let's step back for a second and view the RSI, an RSI data we have. Even though it was enough for us to depend on Elite Wave and RSI signal as we are with the trend, we can see a clear hitting divergence. Can anyone spot that divergence? Signal as well here. This suggested that we should be moving toward the upside. Okay, so now we expected that we'd be willing to be complete and that we expected an upwards movement within we've seen when with the upside labeled with targets labeled at 1.6875 to 1.6881. So the target at 1.6881, that's what, what we are looking for. Bound and pulled toward the upside to reach exactly 1.6901, 20 steps above that target zone we specified. Can you notice something in this chart? A hint the RSI overbought signal. At this stage, we were expecting a pattern to be a sequence, an Elliott wave sequence to be complete. But before that, to anticipate a downwards movement from here means that we are against the trend. Then we shouldn't just rely on Elliott wave analysis and just an RSI overbought signal. The next day, we published this chart. As we mentioned, we are now expecting a completed uptrend. Then, to move to, to anticipate a downwards move, this means that we are against the trend again. Hopefully, that makes sense. So, let's just check what happened next. Cable, re cable reverse directions exactly at 
You can tell by now how powerful is combining elite wave with technical indicators and how elite wave analysis can work as a filter to different signals from different, from different technical indicators. And in the process, helping us to identify a positive, sig a positive signal from a, balls, a false positive signal. This concludes the technical indicator part of the webinar, and we will move next to candlesticks pattern. Well, I thought I should give you guys a break from all the pattern identification questions this time. Candlesticks patterns are indeed very powerful, especially hammers, hanging band, shooting stars, and inverted hammers. We do not rely much on dojis, as they represent indecisions between poles and pairs. So most of the time, presence of a doji pattern suggests that the status quo remains the same. Here we have a, here we have a hammer forming on the daily chart on 15th of April. We all know that presence of a hammer pattern mean reversal is in direction. Also, presence of a shooting star give that same message. Let's view, let's view what we published on 15th of April on the daily chart. We published this chart pointing out the presence of a hammer pattern and the presence and the presence of this pattern at this stage support the main view, which expected a correction was complete and that we are continuing to move toward the upside. We had a target at 1.6881 for the completion of this sequence. Let's see how price unfolded viewing the next slide. Well, we had the first test of that sequence here. This is what appears to be a shooting star. By the end of that day session, the Elliott Wave subdivision of that sequence was still incomplete. So we continued with so we continued with what we have and continued that same analysis, expecting higher highs and kept that target at 1.6881 as it was the day before. Now, not only what this is what happens a couple of days later. Not only a shooting star but a series of dojis unfolding in a sideways manner. As we mentioned, business of dojis didn't add much value, except it anticipated indecision, and that was still in favor of our view. Finally, cable reached our target and exceeded at by 20 pips. But by viewing the subdivisions again, it was incomplete. So further upward movement was expected. Plus, we had no indications supporting directions reversal so far. No MACD, no MACD divergence, no RSI divergence, and definitely no RSI overbought signal. So we anticipated that next upward move would prove final by suggesting that target and 1.6922. Now, target was finally reached, and not only finally reached, we have now a shooting star on top. Now we can start to consider a downwards move. No significant candlesticks pattern, and all we had was two possible elite wave counts. Both counts expected wave B orange here. To start to unfold toward the downside, what we were unsure of was how we B would unfold. So as mentioned, we had two possible counts. That may count expected slight upwards movement before reversing direction, while the alternate count expected immediate downwards movement. So when we published the analysis, we mentioned to our members that both counts have almost equal probabilities. And now we are waiting for confirmation for either count. And that confirmation wouldn't come from an elite weight source. That information would come from other technical analysis tools. Well, we can see right here that first confirmation or a trend reversal from the RSI giving us an overbought signal. Since, since both count was giving us an overbought signal, since the RSI indicator was giving us an overbought signal, both counts expected that short-term trend is now downwards. 
then. At the time, this signal alone was enough to infiltrate, but we prevailed to wait for further confirmation to gain further confidence in this count. How about MACD readings? Is it providing us, us with any signals? Mm, you can say so if you expect this to be a small divergence. This we consider then a divergence from the MACD and that gave us even further confirmation that the alternate count was the right count and that we are going to move toward the one side. So now we have an overput signal from RSI and a divergence from MACD. What is left for us now is to place an order at the confirmation point and set that take profit point at the target area with our stop loss in place. Let's see what happened next. Just a reminder of the alternate count. We had a target at 1.6608, and the, and the end of that target zone is at 1.6574. The very next day, 3rd of April, we publish the main count anticipating further decline before reversing directions with the target zone of 9 taps. But this time, we are keeping a close eye for reversal signals, since the main count expected that upward movement to be quite mature. Keep reach exactly the middle of that zone at 1.6553, and now we have a clear divergence on MACD, and we start preparing, and we start preparing to, to ride the wave up with the next analysis on the 4th of April. So this chart we publish on the 4th of April, anticipating a move toward the upside. That final chart we have here shows how cable unfolded toward the upside, reaching the, the target, the, reaching the target we had, and that move was clearly in an impulsive manner, as Elite Wave expected. Now, before we wrap up, there is one last thing I would like to mention. Most people believe that we still live in the scarcity of information age. That may have been true for the past decade, but like everything else, that has changed. Now, information is in abundance. It's everywhere, good and bad, act and hype, useful and irrelevant. To capture that edge in your trading, not only do you have to get your hands on the right information, but you have to get it in the right time to be able to act on it and benefit from that. Whatever you do, make sure you have the right tools, the right technical arsenal, and most importantly, have it on the right time. Thank you. Thank you so much for being such a great audience, and I really hope you enjoyed this webinar as much as I enjoyed preparing it. Oh, and thank you to Maudie Gilson from FXTrade.com for the trouble she and I went through preparing for this webinar. Um, now it's time for the Q&A session. If any of you have Questions? Piratush, ask Sony, and let me move up in that chat to see who will. Of course, thank you to Tamil Zain, my fellow colleague and my friend. Okay. Ross McCormick, how do you select targets? Well, targets are based on either equal and based mainly on Fibonacci ratios. So if we have equality, like if we were anticipating a corrective pattern, let me show you how to do that. Well, if we were having this pattern here and we were anticipating an A wave toward the downside and a B wave toward the upside, then we should expect a downwards move equal in distance to the distance to what we saw in a wave so that would mean that price would travel the same distance we saw here however if if that okay let me start the second 
Okay, however, if we had that as wave one and two, and then we were anticipating a third wave for the downside, then that distance would equal 1.618, the distance from wave, wave one. So basically, equality for corrections, 1.618 for a motive wave. But that actually doesn't give it its it's right, because it has more to do than that, much more. We have more techniques to calculate targets, like we can use channels, we can use the subdivision. So let me explain this further. If this was a, was a, was a third wave, we have one, two, three, and four within this third wave. Then we have one target around here for the completion of a third wave. However, wave five also equals wave one. So this gives us a target zone to calculate a target based on that move towards the downside. So the closer we move toward the, toward the end of that pattern, the more clearer the view we see. Does that, does that answer your question, Ross? 